we're trying to uh, come to a clear understanding uh, of where people are when they operate in the legal, uh, we have to realize that um, you were born naturally, you weren't born a fiction of law. Um, and we've already established in other videos that the reason that they uh, basically use fictions of law is for convenience for the magistrates uh, to try you as if you're within their jurisdiction, even though you're really not a legal citizen by birth. So uh, when we enter into these contracts, request to be in, and we're gonna remember this is the contract. The statement of birth record the parents filled out is not a contract. That's just a, that's just a statement, okay? Very simple, don't complicate it. They don't say that the record's true or the statement is true. They don't even get involved in it, they just frame it. Um, and because the parents are operating in the legal construct, asking to be known as a legal citizen, a legal participant, for the purposes of paganism, idolatry, and commerce, the state basically recognizes them as such, requiring under contract law to basically establish anything that comes through them in fiction as an issue or some kind of offspring that must be recorded or registered. Uh, but the child is still protected, as we had stated in a previous video, where a child's given name does not have to be placed on the record. There is no law in Caesar's world that could require the parent to divulge the private identity or private name of that child. Um, their system operates on accusations, errors, and things that we participate in by consent. So the parents, even in the legal construct, did not require to place the given name down. So when you enter this and you request to be known, you're actually saying, if you're in the United States, you're requesting to be known as an American or someone participating in their legal commerce world. Uh, do not confuse it with anything other than legal, absolutely, is a very, very dangerous sandbox to play in. You're absolutely going to be the surety for all the mistakes that occur in there because as we know, a man cannot benefit from his own error. So if you're thinking you're going to benefit from playing in the aired contract that you're really not a member of, not realizing that you are a stranger to that contract, you're going to lose in this one. So technically, in their world, in the technical, the web of Satan, in a world of deceit, they've done no wrong because you've consented to play in affection. So it's truth or consequences. So we go to what is a stranger. Well, um, I'm going to read you some points that probably you're not aware of. A stranger, as quoted in the Bouvier's Law Dictionary, dealing with mainly civil law, when a man undertakes to do a thing and a stranger interrupts him, this is no excuse. When a party undertakes that a stranger shall do a certain thing, he becomes liable as soon as the stranger refuses to perform it. So it's amazing that even when people go bankrupt, somehow in the world of sorcery and magic, the magistrates wipe away all the debt. Even if you have no way to repay it, you have nothing in their digital world that will discharge that debt, they basically can get rid of it just like that in a snap with their little magic wand and, and their uh, mallet coming down on the judgment to say, okay, he's bankrupt, he can't pay. Well, of course, they know that already. They're just letting you try because they try all. In fact, many times they give you a free 30-day trial offer to see whether or not you think you can win. So thinking about this straight, and with truth in mind, the statement that says that the party, when a party undertakes that a stranger shall do a certain thing, uh, he becomes liable as soon as the stranger refuses to perform it. Now, remember in the scripture, believers in Christ, as the seed of Abraham, were always considered to be strangers in the world of sin of the other nations. They were strangers and sojourners, pilgrims. 
So when you wake up and realize you shouldn't be in that contract, you could only be considered a stranger because in actuality, the obligation is upon them to perform the contract and the lawyers are the owners of these debt contracts, not you. You were not called to the bar to cross the line from truth into fiction. So the lawyers are the most responsible in this matter and therefore right down to the Declaration of Independence that the parties put together that formed that, they call them their founding fathers, I call them founding fathers and devils, these founding scribes basically are the only ones party to that contract. Anybody else who enters into that is not a lawyer. So therefore the lawyers run the elections, run the voting, run everything. They can change anything because they have the absolute power as we had already discussed as power of attorney. They are the ones carrying the power of the devil. So do not mix up power of attorney with power of the Holy Spirit for God's people. So when you wake up and you refuse or you remove your consent to perform any longer in this contract, well, of course you can get out of it because you were a stranger to the contract to begin with. So relief is on the horizon, but I don't know how many people will listen to these videos because they're too busy trying to fight for something they can't win in, in that legal construct. They've registered all their things, all their worldly possessions in there, and those possessions have become the treasures on earth that they're not supposed to store up as a believer. So we have to really look at ourselves closely if we're going to comprehend what we just talked about.